So hey there, it's Keith, how are you doing? So it is time for me to give you the overview for the Samhain Spell Jar 2017. I am a 54 year old raw vegan. I am a spiritual practitioner. This is, uh, uh, I'm hyper spiritual with many modalities of spirituality from uh, mystic Christianity, Hinduism, Vedic, teachings, Buddhism, witchcraft, and this would happen to be under the heading of witchcraft or Wicca. So this is my third year of the Samhain Spell Jar. Yep. And uh, I think it's one of the most powerful manifesting tools for doing magic. And magic is... Um, Magic or witchcraft is a little more complex than, than like what you would call conscious creation, okay? Um, conscious creation, or, or let's just say a lower level conscious creation, which is just writing affirmations, which this, this has affirmations in it. It's, it's doing sort of more physical stuff of like the jar. So here is the jar from last year. It has a lot of oak leaves, a lot of beans, and a lot of all kinds of stuff that's things that I found appropriate for uh, last year. And then I had a list of affirmations or of things that I wanted to have happen over the year, and I buried that in the ground. And so I have perfected this thing, or I'm adding some new things to it. Um... I guess like, uh, oh, okay, first off, let me, I do have a list. Look at me. I do have a list of things that I want to talk about. Yes, I do. Um, okay, so my friend in Australia, Mick, was talking about the northern su southern hemisphere thing. So it's like, I'm not sure what the traditions of so Australia would be like mostly English people, people who migrated um, one way or another. Wasn't like Australia supposed to be some kind of a uh, people that were kicked out of uh, England or something like that? I don't know. Like, I, I think I've heard that. I don't know if that's an actual truth. And so he was actually asking me about the, the sort of uh, European roots because witchcraft is sort of a European thing. And so... I myself, with being wanting to be more of a uh, a techno shaman, techno witch, techno wizard, urban shaman, there's a lot of people that are like if you go to Tumblr and you look up witchcraft or Wicca, you're gonna find a lot of people practicing stuff in the old tradition. And I'm not uh, for my practice. I don't want to do that. I want to be modern. I want to be using technology. I want to be thinking worldly, globally, and that's really taking some of these things and um, refining them and, and bringing them into modern times. It's taking an ancient uh, practice of connecting with spirit, of connecting with our ability as, as gods to consciously create what, I, what we want, and um, I just happen to be a person who's into the act of using magical tools and stuff like that. So it's like all of the things that are in this jar. I found some kind of symbology. I have my old list here of... Uh, let me see. Let me go through this. Somewhere in here I have my old list. Okay, so I just made a list of some stuff like I, this possibly was from, I originally did this the first time with my friend Crystal from uh, Canada. She was out over Halloween, it was the first go at it, and she helped me sort of perfect some of this uh, stuff, some of the symbology. So, you know, and if you're doing this, and I really encourage you to do it, if you do one magical practice a year, make it this one. And the reason that I'm doing it now, or the reason to do it now, is because this is the end of the year. The Samhain, Halloween, is the time when the veil is the thinnest between the physical and the spiritual world. Um, 
the next day and a lot of like, uh, uh, I don't know where all else in the world, but since I'm in California, I happen to be right next to Mexico and Central America and South America. Um, November 1st, or even in, I guess in everything Catholic, it's, it's, it's uh, All Souls Day, Day of the Dead in, in pagan traditions. And so there is just this association with the afterlife and with the spirit and working with spirits and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, so this is the end of the year. And then you have winter solstice, which is the beginning of the year. And so this time that's in between is a time of reflection. And so I may, as I go through, I may, like, like I said, I've worked on sort of perfecting this. A big thing that is, a, is, I have two big adds to this that are different from the previous two years. The 2015 spell jar and the 2016 spell jar. So I encourage you, like my spell jar is actually going to be incredibly simple this year because I wound up like, I thought I had a simple list. I unearthed this, and I, I think I took a picture of it. I just didn't probably bother or didn't notice it on my long list of photos on my on my phone. There's, there's a shitload of stuff on here, and honestly, if I manifested 50% of it, it's pretty amazing, because it's kind of like it was a really thorough list of really everything I wanted to do. And a lot of magic people, the people that do magic, like, all the time, like, like, every full moon cycle and stuff would say to focus on one thing. Um, and I don't believe, well, at least in the tradition of the way that I'm doing this, and I know for a fact that I have a good 10 people that are doing this. I mean, many of you that follow, you've, you've said over the, over the years that you follow me, you followed me since the beginning, my first Reishi video and stuff like that. Maybe some of you are just doing this in private and not speaking up, but between... Messenger, between um, emails, between uh, messages with uh, actual phone messages, and uh, there's on three in three one two three three different countries that I know of people that are that have done this started doing this because of me, and then a few of you in the United States as well. So. Um, Like I said, I did a really thorough list. This is a thorough list of everything that you want to see happen. And so, um, you know, the funny thing is, is before I unearthed this, I, I knew that there was a lot of things, like I was thinking in September that I had not manifested. But but I was going to be content with it because I did make some major breakthroughs, not the least of which was... Um, playing live, working with this setup that's behind you, that's emanating behind me, that's making sound right now, of, uh, of playing a live electronic music in a live setting with no computer, of like sort of showing my prowess of being able to do something where a lot of people sort of cheat. Um, and I did that and that would have been, uh, I would have been content enough with just having done that. Not to mention also with the food. Um, in this spell jar, I think other than the uh, transdermal magnesium therapy, um, that is something that I know isn't important, but it is still like having a steady practice with that is something that has eluded me because it's uh, a pain in the ass. It takes a lot of um, v vigilance. And so... Um, I'm actually going to like photograph this list. I'm probably going to reincorporate a lot of it into my new list. Uh, a lot of stuff that I have, I'm going to burn or crush down and incorporate it into a part of the jar. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really, I want to get on with this. I don't really want to go over the list. I did a lot of going over my list last year. Um, the food thing, amazing. There's a lot of like stuff about my body in here that I really wanted to get really skinny. Um, that may sound weird. A lot of people know I'm really skinny already, but the thing is, is I'm really small framed, really, and I need to be skinnier. And I'm actually down to I've been 195 pounds on average pretty much all my life, six seven, and I'm down to 174 now, and it really fits in with my frame. 
And that's a whole other video, but I'm just saying like, like I got that. Uh, that, that. That appears in this list quite a few times. A lot of detailed stuff about what I wanted to be doing with my diet. Old school raw vegan and Wigmore style raw vegan. Check, got that. Like that's done deal. That's like the only thing I'm interested in. So, um, so I think that's enough. So what is the new stuff that I'm going to incorporate? Um, oh, I did, I, before I talk about the new stuff, uh, let me go through my list of the things that I wanted to, to, that I'm going to insert into this. Okay. Um, my friend Crystal told me that she's moving. And so, um, she wanted to know what she should do with the jar where she should bury it or whether she should put it in a plant. And of course, if you live in the city, you know, putting it in a plant, you know, that that's fine. That, that works. You know, you could, you could do whatever. And it's like, I go back and unearth the jar myself. It's in my backyard. I was wondering, Crystal, don't you have a jar back here from like two years ago or something that you buried back here? Or did you take it back to Canada with you? I don't really remember. Um, I unearth my jar and pull it apart and look at it and especially look at that list. Um, I don't think that's a necessary thing. You could like, and I mark it with a, a, I dig a hole and I bury it and then I put a spoon upside down. I bury it as like a little marker so I know exactly where it's at. Um... So I don't think that's important. I think it's, it's, it's um, perhaps a little bit ideal to bury it in the actual ground. So perhaps you could, you know, bury it at your parents' house or a friend that's a little more, um, you know, ha- has a place of residence that's going to be there. But I'm not a person that's, that's sticking to rules all the time. It's just like I'm really into this you know, this, this urban shamanism and stuff like, and, and stuff like that. And I just don't even like, like just the way we have plants in our houses and stuff like that. I don't really think that ancient people even, even did stuff like that. So you really need to adapt this stuff to like, what is our lives? And, and, you know, plus I found this on Tumblr. Like I found this whole thing on Tumblr, you know, a couple years, like in 2015, like I said, um, so let's talk about some of the, um, the ads that I have. For one thing, I'm just going to touch on this right now because I want to get to the Jupiter part of this. Um, I am working with the fairy kingdom now, and that is, uh, been a great addition to my life. And I think it's really, uh, a great ad. I'm going to, I'm going to come back to that though. Um, because I have a few cautionary things about working with the, uh, fairy kingdom I'm already at 13 minutes. Holy shit. Okay, so I personally think that an important part of the Samhain spell jar is where Jupiter is because uh, Jupiter moves in, changes sign around this time. Uh, It just moved into Scorpio October 10th. And um, Jupiter is about manifestation, about expansion, and that's what this jar is all about is about manifesting what you want. So I think the aspects of Jupiter and Scorpio are really important. Um, uh, the Jupiter and Scorpio thing is going to be powerful. I'm not going to digress too much on to uh, really at all. I'm just going to talk about that. And this is going to become a regular part of the, uh, I believe that as this goes along, the, 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 the this 12 or 13 months in the, uh, um, where Jupiter changes signs. So I, I really, as far as the way that I'm doing this, this spell, Jupiter is an important aspect of it. And, and what sign it's in. It's in Scorpio. So Scorpio is all about, you know, we're going to get into some Scorpio stuff. I've really put a lot of great effort into learning about Scorpios. Um, because, uh, well, first off, like uh, my musical, one of my musical partners is a Scorpio, and it's it's just been really interesting to learn about him. I think, from what I know about Scorpio, he's he's a classic Scorpio. Um, that's my friend Andy, uh, who's probably my main partner collaborating in Second Culture. But Scorpios are all about depth, about intensities, about like deep stuff. And so, at the top of that list would be sex and death. 
Those are the two biggest things that are that are that are that are really really deep and really have like a lot of um, depth in them. Um, and so here's the things that I'm the aspects that I'm working with. I haven't really comp made my whole list. I'm going to do a part two to this video tomorrow of when I actually get my list together. Um, a deeper relationship with myself, meaning of pulling out like everything. And that's going to happen around the world. I don't want to talk too much about Jupiter and Scorpio stuff with the rest of the world. It's the Jupiter and Scorpio of how it relates to this jar and the personal manifestation. Standing into and being present in my life. And that's actually one of my main affirmations in this spell jar. I actually did one of the things that's going in the spell jar. My niece suggested uh, writing on bay leaves. And so the big theme for me in this spell jar is being present in my life. And so I've done a good job this year of just showing up. That's a really big deal to just show up all the time in your life of doing everything you should. The next step is to be completely present. And so I just, I am present in my life. I'm probably going to write that at least one of these like every day until, well, just the day after tomorrow is when this gets buried in the ground. So I'll write a couple more of those. Uh... No excuses. Scorpios are really intense. They're very businesslike. They can have a tendency to be sort of ruthless because they are so intense and they sort of get things done. And so I'm going to be ruthless with myself about getting things done. Um, a couple of other things just with my, that, like, I don't, I don't want to go over that right now. Um, so some other things that I'm doing that are like uh, definitely all about oak, like the probably aside from like some beans and some food that I eat, that's like my, my stuff. When I say beans, like hard beans and some pieces of wheat and stuff like that. And I encourage you to actually go online and look up, you know, magical meanings of stuff or look for like a. Uh, magical uses for herbs or whatever and so a big thing that's going to be in my jar that's always been in my jar is acorns when an acorn starts growing in the ground growing an oak tree good luck to you with trying to get that fucker to stop like it takes hold and oak is one of the strongest woods that there is um i also have a bunch of uh you know it's really easy time i have a bunch of oak leaves that i'm going to have around and i'm going to go in the jar there are oak leaves in the jar from the last time um the other thing that i have is uh in this um uh mortar and pistol that i have which one is the Pistols, the that yeah this is the mortar yeah um I made an incense formula in here that I put some oils in there and I kind of started thinking like I don't think I should be burning that that's really oils that are for like I just kind of had a feeling and I didn't really want to take a chance of like um letting smoke get in my body and so I put this on the back burner I didn't know what I was going to do with it and so a great magical thing to do is to like put like this has a lot of stuff it has acorns and and leaves and j just different things of where you just sit there and you pound it down and um you have you stay focused while you're doing it and so all of this is going to go in the jar um because i didn't really know i burned it once and it kind of had a it had a lovely smell, but I was also like worried. Of, like I didn't think about the oils that I was putting in there, and I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. I'm also going to clean up leftover bits of papers and stuff that I have, burn it down, reduce that, like burn what'll burn, 
and that's all going to go in the jar and I'm just going to recycle some of the magic. The, li the old list is going to get burnt so that it's, it still exists. So I'm continuing on with that magic. Um, I am also doing this cord is going to go in there. I put this together earlier. It's three strings. It's like, this is my life. I was doing that as I was stretching this out and I'm going to like um, tie knots in it with uh, going over and focusing in on my list of intentions and stuff like that. Um, let's see. So I encourage you to do whatever you want to do. This is really, there, there's no rules on it, um, is, except to be very mindful and very present when you're doing this. You know, light some candles, set a mood, get some music going, if that's your thing. It's always my thing. Um, and I think that that is it as far as like the opening of this. I'm gonna have a part two. I'm not gonna make this as extensive as I did the last year. I think I did five parts of it, including going out in my backyard and everything. So like I said, I'm gonna actually, the stuff that's in here, that's going to go in the new jar. Then I'm going to take what's in here. Some of this stuff, like I have a second culture sticker inside there. I have a, a it looks like a piece of mirror in there. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to crush that mirror down. It doesn't sound like a good thing to do. I don't know what, what I can break down in my mortar and pistol. I'm going to break down to burn. And uh, that's all going to go in there. My list is going to go in there. My cord with a lot of knots. Um, you know, another thing that you could do, which is like what I do over time, over the whole year, is I, I write things that I want to have happen and then I burn them on the full moon. I start a new list on, usually like right after, depending on what I want to do. So if it's in witchcraft, and, and also I did not even bring up that we are moving into, we have a waxing moon, which is a great time for manifestation. And I always let the, like, I don't always follow those moon cycles, but it's falling right. So generally just during a normal cycle when you're not leading into something like winter solstice or summer solstice, even if the moon was wanning, which is where you do a removal magic, um, I let the holiday, the, the, the manifesting power of, of, of the solstice take over. But this time, the moon is waxing, going into Samhain, okay? So it's just all, everything's forward, this whole Scorpio energy. Um, just get yourself in the mood, put this jar together, and go and bury it in the backyard. And um, I did want to say that I don't really think that it makes any difference if, like, I don't know what the holidays are in the Southern Hemisphere, like... You could do this anytime. Like, I, I don't think it makes any difference. Um, I don't know. Do people in Australia celebrate Halloween? I don't know. Those are some of the things that I want to incorporate more as I'm becoming more worldly. And I think I've talked enough. It's Keith. Uh, bright blessings. Namaste. In love and magic. Support me by supporting my music. Links in the drop down. Drop down. I did want to tell you that, like... I'm always writing stuff in the drop down now. Oh, and by the way, there's, um, I have new, new music. Um, I think I'm not going to put that up in this one. Uh, no, this video is too long, but I, I'll put, there's, there's some new videos that I have of new releases I have coming up. If you could just, just hit on that. Um, but below the links for my music is always some text that I'm writing as well. So, um, and as well as my biography that I've started adding. Um, all right. Uh, secondculture.bandcamp.com, second-culture.com. Uh, bright blessings. And I will see you tomorrow with my more completed jar. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.